Hello everyone, welcome to my channel today, another Simplify Summer video, but today we are designing the exact IKEA PAX wardrobe system that was my dream in my loft. It is amazing. We're gonna break it down, how I designed it, how I put it together, as well as the price on the IKEA website. And I'm gonna take you through that. If you are also going to be designing an IKEA PAX wardrobe system, this is how you do it step by step. Plus, okay, one second. Oh. Ah, okay. Let's keep it simple, perfect. I'm gonna show you how you design it online because a lot of people have been asking me how I did it. I mean, a lot of people. Let's skip that intro. First things first, if you are also designing an IKEA PAX wardrobe system, let me know the dimensions of your room if you are a bit stuck. And let me know that you are stuck in the comments below because I am going to be choosing one comment and one room to film a video exactly like this, but designing for you. So let's get to this video. I am going to be situated here. So in the other corner is the subscribe button. I would love for you to hit that subscribe button so we can become more summer friends, more videos are coming your way, including the one I just mentioned. But okay, this is highly requested. Let's get to this video. First, Google search Ikea. <laughs> Pretty simple step. We're gonna go in there and uh, when you see the Ikea interface, you'll notice on that top bar, we've got offers, products, rooms, all that fun stuff. You're actually not gonna be clicking on there. You're gonna be clicking on planning tools. So planning tools, hello. Scroll down there. And as soon as you scroll, you'll see different options. Kitchen, dining, bathroom, bedroom, storage, sofas, office, we are going to be doing storage. So click on storage. Entering the storage interface, you will see all of the different options by Ikea, and I will mention this is not sponsored. Just to slide that in there, Ikea, get at me. So there are a couple of options to actually plan your room. You're gonna scroll down till you see the PAX planner. But if you scroll down further, there are a couple more options. We're gonna click on PAX planner. And when you open it up, first you're gonna need that Adobe Flash to actually run this. You might have to download that. Second, it's gonna load the last thing that you currently built. And mine was my epic IKEA PAX wardrobe wall. So what you will see here is a quick reveal of the actual final product as well as the total cost of it. And this was the epic room that it filled. Now it actually fit perfectly in the room. I just built it in this interface where you can actually just, you know, build it and then know the measurements yourself. There is an option to see the rulers there on your side. We gotta start from scratch, okay? So go to new gallery. You can choose either a already pre-produced storage system. So Ikea has put together a couple of these systems for you. So if you are not as well-versed in design and you kind of just want something made for you, you can scroll through those. We are going to be trailblazers. <laughs> we are going to create our own PAX wardrobe system from scratch. And in here as well, already they are going to work with that customization. So you can choose your room size. We're just gonna choose square because it was actually a square room. The room was actually around 280 centimeters, but I kind of just want a bigger layout. I already know in my head that it's 280. So here we go. We have got that huge room in there. First, we've got to start with frames. There are a few different options. There are actually three options when it comes to those frame widths. You have, okay, you've got the skinny one, the 50. You've got the medium one, the 75, and then you've got the big Huna, the 100. In the room that I was designing, so you grab them and you drag them over into the room, okay? So you can actually grab these and then drag them in. I had the capability to actually have two skinny ones, one medium one, and then one larger unit. Sorry, the scroll is just, okay. So we have one larger unit there. So squish them all together, and there you go. You have your big unit, what you are going to be creating all of your storage inside. In this bottom corner, you have the ruler. So in that, automatically, this is the number one thing you wanna check, and mom, shout out to you, you made sure I didn't make this mistake. The width, 275 centimeters. My room, 280. So it was literally perfect. It fit in there like a gem. So that's the first thing you wanna check. If you are not building an IKEA PAX wardrobe system that is 270 centimeters, you may have to play with different, maybe you wanna have two mediums, two smalls, one small, one medium, things like that. Okay, so let's get going. This is our room layout. You can also toggle between these tools 
of uh, playing around with the way that you see your room. And you can actually shift it from seeing bigger or smaller. We can zoom in just a touch to this wardrobe so that we can really get into it. All right, so we wanna start adding products. So you go up to the top here, add product. Note that it's already 5.30. We have already clocked in at $530. What? <laughs> $530. Okay, we don't need corner frames. If you have a corner room though, you may need a corner frame. And this is something to note as well. They are different frames when you create it because you don't want to waste that corner space. But I actually don't have one of those. So we're gonna go back to main menu. And let's do it. So interior organizers. I was really cognizant of the fact that I wanted to have a lot of drawers. This is not something I've necessarily um, had to play with. Okay, so we are going to go down to the drawer, the complement. So I had, there are a couple of different drawer systems here. I'm gonna start over here because I know that's exactly um, where I was building. And also, hello, change this to white. Monochromatic much. So when it came to building the the actual drawers. Um, there were some with a glass face and some with the opaque face. When you put a product into your IKEA PAX wardrobe system and you're building it in this AutoCAD, you can actually duplicate that product so it's a bit faster. You don't have to go back into this add product template, basically. So there are a couple things that are basically involved with building this IKEA PAX wardrobe system that I was very cognizant of. One, I don't want my underwear on display. So I didn't want to have that be a glass drawer. Um, so when it came to using those opaque ones, it was for my underwear, even bathing suits, things like that, my socks, things that are a little bit less exciting. Next up, I scrolled down to find the drawers with that front glass. If you go into an Ikea and you see these drawers, oh, they are just lovely. And you know what I love too? When people are organizing their closets and it's fall and you're getting all co's and they just have their sweaters so beautifully folded. So we actually did, yeah, we did two of these glass drawers. I didn't realize too, I actually had all opaque drawers here. It's been a little while since I've been in the loft, but we had all opaque drawers, five in fact on the side. I had the one opaque drawer on the bottom in the middle there. And then I had two glass drawers because I wanted to be able to see my sweater. So the opaque one was for jeans and the other two glass ones for were for knit sweaters or things like that. So when it comes to the drawers, we have now completed the job. Going to adding another product. The next thing that I was really interested in when it came to IKEA PAX wardrobe system was actually the um, jewelry organizers. So that's what we are going to do next. So you have these pull-out trays. those pull-out trays on top of the drawers. This is great because not only does it cap off that drawer so you can't see what's in it, so it's like you added a shelf, but you've made use of a couple of inches. So you put that drawer on top, but you don't want it to be exposed. It's actually much better for gold jewelry, copper jewelry, things like that, not to be exposed too much to the air. So what I did was still to make it really beautiful so you could see the jewelry that was in place so it acts almost as an accent to the closet wall, I put a glass shelf right over top of it. And then you actually have a shelf. I had one point where I had a separate jewelry jar or if I didn't have clothes hanging too low, I actually had flowers hanging at one point or in, in a little vase there. So it was actually quite lovely. So the next thing that I did was I considered my shoes. They have a really great product when it comes to shoes. They actually have this whole pull out shoe organizer. So this pull-out shoe organizer, I put it on the big middle piece and I also put one 
on the medium piece. So now I have two options when it comes to shoes. I have that back part of that pullout drawer and the front. Instead of just stacking them and then forgetting which ones were in the back, it was a really cool possibility that you could actually see what was in the back of your closet there and what was in the front. One thing I wanna let you know about this, you gotta pull them out every once in a while and dust behind there because it certainly does get dusty. So next up, this is a closet, of course. You're going to be hanging things. So I have found the clothing rail. You are going to be put in this, or rather I did. I put it in the middle, the large system, the medium system, and the small system on the right. I didn't do it on the left, but I'm gonna show you why in a moment's time. So in the middle big system, that is where I hung blouses, that's where I hung sweaters that needed hung, and I actually organized this fully color-coded. Before I would organize it according to sweater and blouses and things like that, but my friend Sarah Wimhoff said, why don't you do it by color? Because then when you're looking for a red top, you've got all of them there no matter what they are. Loved that, great suggestion. The middle one, that is the medium size, this is where I just left it completely full. That is for short dresses, long dresses, maxi dresses, as well as those long trench coats that you've got. And in the other side where I have the skinny one, that is where I put all my jackets and my vests that I wanted saved. So now that we have all of our clothing bars in place, it's now to time to put in some shelves. We certainly want to get some shelf action in here because that's where you're going to display your purses, that's where you're going to put your hats, things like that. So if we go to the shelf, and this is again a shelf that actually doesn't have the glass on it. So this is no, this is those opaque shelves, the one that cost $10. We are going to be putting those shelves in. And what I did actually when it came to the shelves was I had my bar up to a certain level that I could still reach it. So this is gonna be different for everyone. I could still reach my hangers and everything, but I put a shelf right above that. This is something you wanna focus in on though because you don't wanna hang the shelf too close to the bar. You wanna be able to put that hanger over. So I put a shelf all the way across the top of my system. It looks like it's black, but it's actually just casting a shadow. You're gonna also struggle <laughs> just lightly with this. Trust me, it's just a thing. But you don't have to line it up perfectly because um, you will be able to play around. So in this small system on the side there, I added these little shelves, okay? So in there, I put my hats and across the top, in all of those shelves, I actually put shoes that were out of season. So all of my heels were in there, heel to the back, and it really just looked lovely and it really filled in the closet. I gotta say, I have now completed this side. I have now completed the middle big one, and I have now completed that medium one as well. As for the very right side of this unit, it is not yet complete. We actually have to add one more white shelf that's opaque right here. Because we're only hanging jackets, we don't have to worry about the fact that it is full. So this is the next thing that I'm gonna hang. And I was just honestly curious about this part of the unit and that's why I added it. So it's actually the pullout pants hanger. I did that right underneath that shelf. So you're gonna have jackets and then you're gonna have that pullout pants hanger. But this is my final unit. This is exactly how I built it. And as we went through the process, you watch those dollars go up. It's very simple to build and I hope that you guys have a really fun time building yours. And another note, when you do save it, inside of your own interface because you can do this at home or you could do this inside an Ikea. When you save it, it's going to give you a little PAX code. Save that code and as soon as you go to Ikea, you can actually log on to their computers and you can enter that code and it'll pull up your design, which is really, really fun. Make sure that you print off your sheets as well. This was really helpful. If you don't have a printer at home, do this at Ikea because they have printers there to help you. So as soon as you print off those sheets, it's going to have every single thing that you need, how many you need, how many you have ordered, and then it's gonna tell you exactly what bin it is in. Because if you've ever sh shopped in Ikea, you know that it's all according to bins down those aisles. It's gonna tell you the aisle, it's gonna tell you the bin, it's gonna tell you where to pick it up. You're gonna need a big trolley, you're gonna need help uh, carrying these for sure. Those really big pieces in the back, 
they are certainly a tackle to pick up. If this is the first video that you're watching from my IKEA PAX wardrobe, I will link up the one that I originally posted and kind of caught fire and had a lot of fun with. It was the full vlog. So it's basically the process of me picking everything up with my dad, putting it together, and there were some really helpful tips embedded throughout that video that will help you actually figure out how to create your own IKEA PAX wardrobe system and not mess up along the way and learn from someone else's mistakes. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. It was a lot of fun to make. And another reminder, if you are building an IKEA PAX wardrobe system and you want some help to the design, let me know in the comments below the actual dimensions of your room and I will get to work and film a video that is almost the exact same as this, but instead of for me, it's gonna be for you. We'll see you guys in my next video.